match it and, and get PSG a point. So it finishes PSG 1, Newcastle 1. We'll talk about the significance of that result regarding who's going to go through a little later on. But first, let's focus on the game as we welcome in uh, Frank LeBeouf is with us. Frank, forgive me, I'm going to start with a Newcastle man on the panel. You don't see Shaka very angry very often, do you, boys? No. We did in the 95th <laughs> minute. I, I thought it was a ridiculous, a ridiculous decision. Um, it, it goes against the green of, of everything, kind of my own experiences as, 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 as a footballer. It, it goes against when I was on the, on the IFAB advisory panel, how we were trying to reshape the handball law. N nothing about this added up. And, and it just felt... It felt like uh, an injustice. OK, so forget about it hitting the body, OK? It's all about, is the arm making the body bigger? So I spoke to Peter Walton and Mark Clattenburg, of course, both former Premier League referees, and they say it's not the right decision because the no. arm is in a natural position. Because in, in England, let's just give some context to the hit in the body. IFAB changed the rules to take hitting the body out of the equation, then it deflects onto the arm. The old rule was once it deflected off a thigh or, or any part of the body on the arm, it wouldn't be a penalty. They changed that. And now they're looking, ironically, in a meeting today mm -hmm. for next year to change it back again, uh, which doesn't do Newcastle any favours. But in England, Premier League, they tried to go with this early on, two or three years ago, and decided, no, it, it was a disaster. So they've gone their own way. This would not have been a penalty in England. It shouldn't have still been... Even taking into account they've ditched it coming off the body, the fact that his arm is not totally outstretched but the other one, to me, is proximity. Uh, Stevie, I'll, I'll come to you in a minute. I just want to get a French perspective on this and go out, out to Frank. What do you think, Frank? Well, I agree with the guy, um, especially with Shaka, that I felt that that was the only way and uh, it was about to come to see Paris Saint-Germain getting something out of the game. And we felt, uh, even in France, and, the, and some pundits like Samir Nasri or David Ginola I said it, that we, we all felt that uh, Paris is going to get something out of it. And it's crazy because it, that penalty doesn't make any sense because, and you rightfully showed it before, you have the Miley situation, which is completely the same situation. Mm -hmm. Touches the body, then, then, then the arm, running, having a normal, uh, a normal position, and, uh, and not asking the ref to go to the VAR. But because you're not at the end of the game, you're not at the 98th or 97th minute, you don't ask the ref to go to the to, to VAR, but because on that special minute, you ask then the ref to go to, the, to see the VAR. And the ref feel the pressure, and he has to give the penalty. But it's not a penalty. Nobody wants to believe that. Uh, that's stupid, because the positioning of the, of the body is only natural, and I think it's, uh, it's really unfair to, uh, to Newcastle for me. They did have 31 shots, Stevie. <coughs> Overall, could you say that PSG deserved a draw? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, PSG deserved something from the game. Um, personally, I think they were the better side. Personally, I think they deserved to win the game. Right. But that really doesn't count anymore because of what's happened. And, and I'm absolutely with Frank and Chaka that the VAR and the referee have just caved into pressure because not only was, the, was there another shout for a penalty with Miley, mm -hmm. there was also a challenge on... Uh, Hakimi, mm -hmm. that, that Val looked at, they didn't give. And so, for me, the only real explanation is they've kind of caved in. You know, three, three Val looks, three strong shouts, supposedly, and they've just decided at the end to give one. And, and actually, I'll take the Val away. Because, particularly myself, I'm always saying the referee should have the last word. And so, at the end of the day, it's the referee that's caved. Because he has the final say. Yeah. Even though they brought him to the to the to the the, the monitor, he can still make his own mind up what he thinks. Because his decision is the only one that really matters. But he's caved in as well. But, so. but the Gordon challenge on on Hakimi was there was barely anything in that at all. But it, but I, they still had a bad look at it, and, and so nothing, and so the, the, you, you get the feeling that the the and the Miley arm was down by his side. I mean, this mm -hmm. is just I, I you know. And I've been you know, following Ian Dark and others on social media. Every, a lot of us are big advocates and have been big advocates for VR. But VR this, this year in particular, I think, is across the board, uh, from the Premier League to, to Champions League to, to Bundesliga, Serie A, La Liga, you name it. It's absolutely gone. It's gone. We're taking we're now we're now doing the, we're now really micromanaging and refereeing the games. It's gone. 
it has gone to the place that they didn't want it to go. And that is re-refereeing mm. almost everything. And whilst I don't want to just chuck the baby out with the bathwater here, I, I do think they're going to have to scale, and I don't think they will, but I really do feel they should scale it back to allow the referee the on-field decision-making and instinct. So we could be looking at Hawkeye over the line, offsides, off the ball incidents, and then let the re referee referee the game. But that's why we've got VAR. So we're not relying on a referee who has to make yeah, a decision but we've got to a stage in a split now. second. Yeah, but we've got to a stage now. We are re-refereeing all these minute decisions. And come on, that's it's actually putting the referee under pressure to, to not make a big decision. I know plenty of people have had this discussion where you could make the argument referees have got worse. Right. Because... They know they have that it's parachute. The safety, safety blanket. The safety blanket is there when... Uh, I tell you what, I'm not going to make that call. And if I get the shout, I'll go to the monitor. And then my uh, hands are clear. And it's actually making... It is, it's making the game so much more frustrating. I don't want this to turn into a VAR debate because obviously we can have that more in the future. And there's a lot to talk about today. Uh, what happened on the pitch, not only in this tie, but others as well. Why didn't PSG steamroll this Newcastle side that's just band aid together? Because... Because they aren't, they don't have the ability to do that. And I'll, you've got to give Newcastle a lot of credit. You know, you're absolutely right. You know, they had, today they had two goalies on the bench at the weekend when they battled Chelsea. They had three, and young Miley plays again, 17, 17 18 years old, whatever he is. Uh, again, Lascelles is in at the back, and just a, an absolutely terrific effort from Newcastle, defensive effort. And you know, Pope had to make. A few saves. Dembele was wasteful. Mm -hmm. Mbappe was wasteful in the first half with that flick. But, you know, they, they're... I think their times G is something crazy, PSG. But who's won and lost the game by stats? So, uh, most of the credit for me goes to uh, the Jordies. Yeah, Newcastle, who just show this team mentality once again, Shaq. Yeah, and listen, I, I really sympathise with, with Eddie Hall and the position that he's found his, his, himself in. Uh, what was it? Seven players on the bench. Craig already mentioned two goalkeepers. All the others were, were teenagers and didn't have anybody to call on. Didn't make a single substitution all game long just because they're just down to the, to the bare bones. Alexander Isaac just back from injury. I, I think you, you saw him. He tired late on. He was unable to, to hold the ball up. He was unable to chase back. So in, in the end, Newcastle kind of defended with, with 10 men. And, and to be fair, I thought Newcastle did as good as you could expect. And I was commenting on the fact that I barely knew what Donnarumma looked like for the first 20 minutes or, or, or so. Um, but then Donnarumma, or both of, of Newcastle's early chances came from one, a, a poor pass out from him, and then, and then the, the, the spill, which, which I, again, I, I find hard to explain. You get yourselves in front, and now you have something to defend. And, and Newcastle can do that, and they show that they, that they can do that. And they banned on the hatches. Um, I, I thought, I thought as, as well as Nick Pope played, as well as Newcastle played defensively, you're right, PSG absolutely battered Newcastle, but for want of a better finishing. I thought their finishing was, was poor um, and maybe at times a little bit unlucky. And as a result, um, almost didn't get anything out of this. We expected a response then from PSG going 1-0 down, Frank, after dominating the opening 20 minutes. It didn't really come until like the final 20 minutes of the tie. And even in the, in the end, in the final third, they were extraordinarily wasteful. Yes, mainly because of Newcastle and the way that ADO uh, uh, planned everything. And I have to say that first half, I was very impressed by the way they were defending, but the way how they were capable of keeping the ball technically, tactically, how they were working all together. That was very impressive. Second half, yeah, they park, as we say, they park the, bu the bus, uh, but they drop in a very smart way. And I have to say that Guimara, Jolinton, and Miley did a hell of a job uh, in the middle of the park, working for everybody, uh, uh, getting the spaces and making sure that uh, it was impossible for Paris Saint-Germain to go inside, uh, to go outside. And we all know that Paris Saint-Germain, they cannot cross the ball because there is nobody capable of making a header. That, that's this one of the worst team in Champions League uh, about uh, uh, um, on, on, on about headers and everything. They they're not good at that. So uh, how they planned it, 
uh, and how the, the game w went on is because mostly of Newcastle. But of course, uh, Mbappe wasn't there the, most of the game. Uh, Dembele was very clumsy. Uh, uh, and some players who came on, Alonso, uh, Asensio and some other, they didn't bring what they, they, they had to bring. They missed so many obvious chances as well. And on top of it, you don't have Marquinhos at the back. As Shaka said, if Donnarumma keeps on making foul, uh, mistakes, it's not going to work. It's impossible. Frank, what would they be saying in France about this performance from PSG? You mentioned that you've got Mbappe, you've got Mouane, really good players who just didn't turn up. And we see this time and time again, I feel. Well, people are, people are frustrated for some who likes uh, Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, some others can be upset. Some, some others are not even surprised. That's how they play and they've been playing. And you, you always feel that there is something missing. And Newcastle is the contrary picture of what you see. They play Newcastle, the Mike Price, they play with enthusiasm, with self-belief, with courage. We don't have that in Paris Saint-Germain. You have the technique, you have maybe the stars, you have maybe the talent, but you don't have what you need, uh, uh, meaning guts, in, 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 on the field. You're not going to achieve anything. And it's what's going on with Paris Saint-Germain. And years after years, you feel that. Uh, the players are getting supposedly better and better every year, but then you don't achieve anything. So it's kind of a faith. Uh, it's kind of what you have with Paris Saint-Germain and we'll keep on having with players that you get. You wouldn't put your money anywhere near them, would you? No, they're, they're, to answer your question, they're a one-man band, is what they are. You can't rely on anybody in that team, apart from Mbappe. It's down to him. If he's on his game, they win the game. If he's not, they don't win the game. I mean, it really is that simple. They're a one-man band. Who, 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 who do we ever talk about in PSG? It's only, it's only ever him. Because what do you say about the rest of them? The only thing you can say about the rest is you can't trust them right, and you can't but rely but on them. He's a good player, you know? We saw him in the Bundesliga. We, we know what he can offer. Yet these players seem to go to PSG and just get lost. So is the problem that everything's catered to one guy? You tell me. Is that... Well, it, it, it can only be that. You know, we're sitting here talking about Newcastle and we're talking about team. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not pulling individual names out. We're talking about team. They defended well as a team. Everybody did the part. Everybody did this, blah, blah. We don't say that ever about PSG. It's always Mbappe. And so that's probably your problem. Everything's catered to the one guy. And if that one guy isn't quite at it or doesn't quite fancy it or for whatever reason, then they don't succeed. Which is what more or less Luis Enrique over the past couple of months has... I'm going to say hinted that, but probably stronger than that. Yeah. Uh, and even in the, in the game, the domestic game, when Mbappe scored the hat trick, and Enrique said, "I'm not happy with him." Yeah. Uh, and to back up sort of what Stevie's saying, I, I think if in an ideal world, if he was to be given uh, a framework for two or three years guaranteed, and he could shake Mbappe off to to Real Madrid, which is probably going to happen, but it's going to maybe take a little bit of time. And then rebuild the team as a more, as a team. I think that would be his preferred option. But again, we're looking at time here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's going to get that time? At a club that that is that is still searching, that spends money. But they've tried all this before. With the big, it was Neymar and Messi. It was all three of them. He's the one real big superstar. Yes, they have Zaire Emery to come back in, the youngster, brilliant young talent. But Kulamwani and Dembele, who's as flaky as hell, oh. we know that. Uh, and we saw it again tonight. But he wants more of a team. Now, the big question is, for every manager there, are they going to get the time to do that? And mm. the answer is, is probably no.